Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us today for the webinar. My name is Tony Caswell. I'm the product marketing manager for the energy business at DTN. Um, in October of last year, uh, DTN commissioned Forrester Consulting to understand the current state of digital modernization adoption at downstream oil and gas companies. We commissioned the study because it was imperative for us to test the hypothesis upon which our future strategy is based. Our, our hypothesis being, um, as the world emerges from the pandemic, downstream businesses must be future fit. Wholesalers, suppliers, terminals, and carriers re-examine what it means to be a digital business in 2021 and what it takes to become future fit and succeed in 2022 and beyond. The intent of the research is to examine how leaders and companies across all sectors are thinking about digital business post-COVID, identifying challenges like shrinking margins and their priorities regarding digitizing their business to achieve growth and greater profitability. Uh, today, we are going to be presenting the results of that study uh, titled Digital Modernization Fuels Downstream Oil and Gas. Um, just a little housekeeping before we do get started. Uh, this webinar is being recorded and the link to the recording will be provided to you all in the next few days. If you do have any questions during the presentation, please type them into the Q&A tool in your WebEx control panel. And if time allows, we'll try to address those questions when they are asked. Otherwise, we'll address your questions when the presentation is complete. Now, let's uh, meet the presenters for today. Our first guest speaker is Ted Shadler from Forrester Research. Ted will walk us through the results of the study and answer some of the most pressing questions you may be asking yourselves in regard to your own digital modernization journey. After you've heard the results of the study, Heather Killow, Charles Davis, and Steve Lloyd from DTN will provide some additional context to the study and share key takeaways, recommendations, and next steps for accelerating your own digital modernization progress. Now, without further ado, we will hand it over to our guest presenter, Ted Shadler, Vice President and Principal Analyst from Forrester Research. Thank you, Tony. Hi, everybody. I look forward to our discussion uh, down the road here in a few minutes, but I wanted to present the work of my colleagues and, of course, folks at DTN as well, the wonderful study into downstream oil and gas and uh, the needs. And to kind of get us started, I'm actually going to jump forward a couple of slides and I'll come back, I promise. But um, if you just kind of step back and look, I think we can all agree that the downstream energy industry, all of y'all, is a very complex ecosystem. It requires wholesaler, supplier, terminal, and carrier partners to think and work differently, in particular, to seamlessly collaborate and securely communicate with each other to maximize the efficiencies and the profitability of all. So it's about taking digital capability outside to the edge of your businesses and then further out to empower your partners so you can work collectively on behalf of your ultimate customers here. So to do that, we did this wonderful study. And so we uh, just want to introduce you to the study. So 308 technology strategy decision makers, all in downstream oil and gas, carrier, supplier, terminal, and wholesaler. And this was global in the sense that it was North America and Europe. And so we had a good representation from all of the countries you see there in the map. And the titles were quite senior. C-level VP and director were the majority of it. And it's across a variety of departments. And we'll come back to this later because it's important to look at the data through the lens of what your specific responsibilities are, what your specific contribution to the value chain is, and then also how you think about your role in that realizing of the end value. And so to, uh, Kind of get us started. I, I want to kind of talk about what uh, probably is on many of your folks' minds, which is what are the challenges and what are the opportunities in digital modernization of oil and gas. So let's just kind of start with a high level picture here. This is all data out of the study, and we'll get a chance to really roll up our sleeves and, and probe on it and ask some questions of the data. But if we look here at the start, 72% of the respondents agree that digital modernization is a top priority for their business. But when you double click on that, 43% of them have yet to begin their digital modernization initiatives. So there's sort of a late starter penalty, if you like, not insurmountable, 
but there's a bit of a disadvantage if the other 57% are moving forward. It's an opportunity to really think about what modernization can do for you. So there's this gap between knowing it's a priority and having started. So if we look at the opportunity side of this, we ask the following question. Which of the following initiatives are included or do you expect to be included in your digital modernization efforts to help your organization achieve its priorities? And you see here this top few list here, but I'm gonna actually click and highlight a few of them beyond the top three even, because digital modernization goes beyond efficiency to really look at what lies between the firms to improve both internal, as I said, data out at the edge and external with partners data sharing to respond quickly to market changes as an ensemble, as, a, as an ecosystem, to improve collaboration and communication with your key supply partners, and then to improve data insights and analytics so you can actually act better with more confidence, for example. Well, how about the challenges? We asked, to what extent are each of the following challenges when it comes to your modernization efforts? And we have here in light green, if it's a significant challenge, and in dark, we have if it's a moderate challenge. And you can see here again, the top three, cybersecurity at the top, skills, always a concern. And here we see again, the inability to effectively leverage data. If we double click here, we see that this take advantage of the data we already have, we may already be collecting, but we certainly already have available to us. We haven't yet harnessed it. We haven't yet figured out how to put it into play to derive the insights, to drive the action, to create the efficiencies and the profitability. So those are the challenges and the opportunities. So look, I've been at Forrester Research for 25 years looking at the disruptive benefits of technology to business and to the world. And so I'm a believer, as you could probably tell, that technology can make a material difference. And yes, with great power comes great responsibility, as we know, but technology can tilt the balance toward opportunity. In fact, 83% of our respondents agree that it would be valuable to have operational intelligence solutions that produce real-time data insights to help them achieve their goals. That's a big number. 83% are on board that they have to invest in solutions to realize these benefits. Okay, so what are the benefits? We here asked a probing question. What benefits have you experienced from improving operational intelligence in your modernization efforts? And you can see here, again, there's a number at the top and I'd like to draw attention to those. The first benefit is to improve the analysis of the dynamics, the real-time dynamics, as well as the historical dynamics. To use insights to identify the patterns of change, the things that we want to operationalize. To gain better insights into areas to improve sustainability. Major force at work here, both with consumers and with businesses. And so gain those insights to improve the employee experience. At Forrester, we have a whole line of work we call the future of work to focus on the employee experience and the productivity and the satisfaction, the happiness of employees because they have access to the data, the insights and the tools they need to do their jobs and to do it well. To improve operational effectiveness. And then here again, to reduce the risk and the threats that come through cybersecurity. So tremendous benefits realized. Okay, so we have opportunity, we have challenges. We see that technology and technology solutions can drive a very material change. So let's look and think about what the collective response is, if you like, of operational intelligence for the value chain. So we ask, for example, with partners, if you can improve areas of collaboration with your supply chain partners, what are the top three? So rank one, two, three. Think about, you've got 10 to pick from, what are my top three in order? And that here you see again a listing, one version of the data, if you like, 
singular view of the data, proactively resolve problems, avoid disruptions, and then things like negotiate terms and all. So, okay, those are the areas to improve in collaborating and working with supply chain partners. When we also asked, how hard is it to do that? What we see here, and these are lovely pink, uh, think Easter, I guess. Um, the top three here are uh, mirrored in the improvement areas, starting with the ability to proactively identify and resolve problems. So if I can get early warning that something's happening in the moment, in the day, in the week, in the month, that will help me improve not just the collaboration, but the outcome, the output, the effectiveness of that relationship. Um, maintaining one version of the truth. 62% say it's very difficult to do that. And then receive status and process updates. So this is, again, the real-time notion coming in, wanting to be notified in that moment of, of action, what's going on and what I should do about it. These are important and they're also challenges. And in fact, if we kind of step back a little bit and say, well, yeah, are these the folks that are not modernizing? And in fact, 48% agree that their supply chain partners have been slow to digitally modernize. Remember that 43% of respondents said they were slow, but more than that, feel their supply chain partners have been slow to digitally modernize. Now, I'd like to probe on three of these, the ones I called attention to in a little more detail. So if we look at the proactively resolved problems, 41% said this is an area of collaboration improvement for us. And uh, that's on the left-hand side. And then 71% said, wow, this is hard. Uh, again, 62% uh, feel that uh, maintaining one version of the truth is hard and 42% see that as a major benefit. In fact, that's the highest performing uh, collaboration opportunity. And then receiving status and process updates, the implication being real time, 53% say hard and 31%, a significant percentage, view viewing that as an area of improvement and opportunity. So here again, we have this dichotomy, this disparity, this difference between areas I'd like to improve and challenges I face in improving it. And here again, technology is a solution. Technology and operational intelligence is a way to improve that collaboration and overcome the difficulties. So we also wanna understand what kinds of data will drive the most progress. So we asked what data would help your organization make better decisions. And we see here a very large variety of data that's valuable. It's real time, which you've heard me say several times already, is at the highest at 67% of our 308 respondents feeling that real-time data would help the organization make better decisions. That's insights in the moment. Very, very powerful. A market analysis at 63%. Rack spot market data at 56%. Wholesale volume demand data at 55%. Weather data at 55%. Fuel temperature data, very important consideration in the moment in operations, 51%. Not just operations, also things like pricing. <laughs> availability, <laughs> ability to fulfill the need. 50% uh, say supply chain partner information would be extremely valuable to make better decisions. And then 46% say historical data. This is where I wanna draw our attention back to the respondents, because you may remember we had respondents in operations, in IT, in finance, in strategy and planning. And so if you were to talk to a strategy planner, that might be a place where historical data has even more importance because it allows you to spot those trends and make strategic decisions that will affect your business based on that knowledge of history. So all kinds of data can come into play to have better operational intelligence from historical to real time. I already walked you through this. <laughs> Sorry, I gotta shrink down my screen here. There we go, that's better. Sorry, you didn't see that, but I, I did probably. So um, we then further said about the solution side. How are you gonna pick the best solution for you? What are you looking for? And we asked how important are the following when choosing it, either very important and dark and important and light. So as you see here again, we have kind of a streamlining at the top, real-time data, there it is once again, status updates, not just data, seamless integration, 
And so there's a tremendous, again, opportunity. I'm going to highlight these four at the top because they are the ones that rise to the highest level of consideration and importance when choosing a solution. And so continuing that, we have the integration with existing business processes and solutions. We have to incorporate this into what we're doing and how we're working. We need to be able to distribute the insights to the people who need to make the decisions. So it's not just about having data in the back office somewhere. It's about putting data in play out to where it can make that difference. And that includes the flow of data into business intelligence systems that help me gauge performance and act. So we probed a little further and said, okay, so you said these things are important, but which of the following do you lack access to today? The gaps in your solution set. And as you'll see here, well, only 2% face no gaps. So everybody faces gaps. It's the same for items. So the ones that are most important and valuable they seek in a solution are also the ones they're struggling to fulfill today or haven't yet invested to fulfill today. Well, that's a good thing because that means the things you need, the things that will improve you are very clearly defined. Real-time status updates, streamlined distribution of insights, seamless integration into existing business processes and solutions, and the flow of data into our business intelligence systems to gauge performance. So that's the study. It was a wonderful study, and I think very revealing about the importance, the critical importance of insights, real-time data sharing in a protected cybersecure way, not just internally, very important internally, out to the edge where decisions are made, but also with key partners in a safe and protected and actionable way to drive the ecosystem efficiencies as well as the internal organizational efficiencies. So great to be part of that study. And now I'm going to just pass the ball back to everybody to say, what steps can you take today? Tony, you may be on mute. Yes, thanks, Ted. Um, yeah, now we'll pass it over to Steve Gloyd. He's the Intellectual Property Portfolio Manager here at DTN, as well as Heather Killo, Senior Commercial Leader, and Charles Davis, Commercial Leader. Thank you. Hey, Ted, brilliant Ted talk, so to speak. Hey, just think <laughs> only two years ago, WTI dropped by 300% trading at a negative $37 a barrel. WTI is special in a way because it's so tightly correlated with the physical oil markets. Since then, sentiment, fear and greed, along with the war premium is moving the market. We all saw the market spike above $130 a barrel and then quickly fall again. Now oil prices are back above $100 after negotiations with Russia and Ukraine have deteriorated. Volatility is here to stay. Tight supply and instability require real-time decision tools. Digital modernization is the great equalizer. Using sophisticated data and transactional tools helps us run highly efficient operations that keep pace with extreme market environments. Let's look at the top 10 theme, top four themes discussed by Ted and how DTN is leading the charge towards digital modernization. One of the key themes that Ted discussed was how the industry progress is lagging. 72% agreed digital modernization is a top priority, yet only 56% have started modernizing. So how can DTN help its customers play catch up by using our advanced commercial development and tech stack? As a SaaS, DTM builds and tests solutions that can be plugged into by our customers without taxing their own IT resources. Let's share an example of how we help our clients close the digital gap. Let's talk about streaming EBOLs with DTN Fuel Admin. Let's elaborate with uh, Charles or Heather with some examples. Uh, sure, Steve. Good morning, everybody. This is Heather Killo. I will take a first stab at this, um, and, and I'll even start by saying, you know, digital modernization as a phrase and as a kind of a, a concept for our industry, in spite of the fact that technology is a part of our everyday lives, personally, um, we really, as an industry, are a bit behind, right? And, and that's what this study showed, is that everyone that is participating in decision-making within our clients' um, 
the, the whole family of our clients, everyone is struggling with the concept of where to begin. And one thing that Charles and I talk about a lot when uh, Charles rejoined DTN or came to DTN a year before I did, and then I rejoined um, two years ago, almost today, it's uh, almost my two year anniversary being back. And one of the things that he and I were really just profoundly excited about prior to rejoining was this concept that our industry really could catapult itself forward if we could harness technology in appropriate and affordable ways to, to, to automate, to move documents, to facilitate transactions. Um, and, and so that's, that's what we were so passionate about when we both decided to come to DTN and make an attempt at um, bringing these solutions to reality for the industry. Um, and so you asked me for an example, and probably the most basic one that I would hand you would be this concept of streamlining EBOLs. Um, DTN has a product called Fuel Admin that's been around, uh, I think, since about 2017. And what Fuel Admin does essentially is take all of the, the matching and the idea that you've got to have an employee looking at an invoice versus a BOL, all of that can happen in an automated way. And, and you can let that person then only deal with exceptions and they can be much more effective at other parts of their job because they're not doing the mundane. Um, and so what I mean by exception reporting, well, this allows an employee to be alerted only when there's a problem, only when there's an issue with the BOL matching. Um, it allows everyone to get paid faster uh, because that matching happens more quickly and in many cases automatically or almost instantaneously. Um, and it also allows you to, you know, most of the people that we do business with have more than one supplier. Um, I think it would be very simple if everybody could just buy from one person and the, that one seller would probably be a very happy participant in the industry too. But the fact that our customers do business with so many different suppliers and carriers and so forth, the concept that they can keep all of their invoices and BOLs in a convenient repository where it doesn't matter who my supplier is, I don't have to go to 10 different websites to find those documents. And so I think that, you know, from, from a kind of a streamlining of workflow um, concept, I think that's probably one of the most powerful things easily done from a price model, um, probably one of the easiest things that any of our clients can do to, to kind of get started or to, you know, make a big push forward in terms of taking advantage of technology right now. Thank you, Heather. That was a great example. So the second item was uh, operational intelligence, another big theme in, in, in Ted's discussion. 83% agree that it's valuable to have operational intelligence that produces real-time data insights. Did you know that in North America, DTN manages 80% of all terminal pricing and billing transactions? Every day, we electronically measure the flow of actual volume generated by the downstream. Whether you're in the margin preservation business or marketing supply in a highly competitive region, DTN can expand your view of com the competitive landscape. One example of this is our refined fuels demand data. I'm sure you all know how much volume you move, but what about the overall market demand? And for all you traders out there, are you still waiting for this week's EIA or API inventory report? Let's talk about how clients have benefited from this unique data intelligence. Heather or Charles? Yeah, thanks a lot, Stephen. Uh, we, we came out with refined fuels demand about a year and a half ago. And it was a great data set because, it, like you said earlier, it gives people insights on what the actual demand is, not only from a, a pad or a national level, but it also goes down to the individual rack city uh, level of, of detail, which is very, very, very compelling. And some of the trading communities have told us that they've taken this opportunity to kind of gauge in real time what the actual uh, volumes or demands are in each pad level, which helps them anticipate what the market will be called by EIA on Wednesdays, which was incredibly valuable for them, particularly the ones that are trading from a paper perspective. Um, also, we also have folks that are have more regional or local concerns about where product is moving and how they 
our position in each individual marketplace. So from that perspective, people are able to see what their market shares are at, at their local terminal levels, but they can also determine where to invest or where to deploy additional resources, uh, particularly in times where you have shortages in, in carrier uh, drivers issues and, and really refocusing on where you can benefit the most from where you deploy your assets. Um, when we went out and talked to folks about operational intelligence, initially there were a lot of folks that said, wow, this is nice to have, but I'm really not sure how it could benefit uh, our business right away. Uh, and after giving us some real compelling use cases and giving people uh, the numbers that they need to support uh, the spend, uh, we're getting an overwhelming uh, response for those folks who are asking for this particular type of operational intelligence. So this is one example of one of the so solutions that DTN has to offer from an operational intelligence perspective. Great example, Charles. Thank you so much. Next up is supply chain communication and collaboration. As Ted mentioned, 77% agree that more efficient and secure communication with supply chain partners is a priority. DTN helps drive efficiency through every moving part of the downstream sector. Our goal is to help customers make confident decisions across the supply chain. One great example is a brand new game changer. This is something we're rolling out this spring and it's called energy digital commerce. We really have something special here. Our developers really did their homework and this team, this team truly believes that good is the enemy of great. Our secure cloud-based platform allows participants to set prices and accept customer orders. You can manage your customer premiums and payment terms right from your own dashboard, not to mention it fully integrates with your own ETRM back office. I'm gonna throw this one to Heather because I think it's one of her crown jewels. <laughs> it is one of my favorite things to talk about. Thanks, Steve. Um, <clears throat> I am very excited about the DTN digital commerce platform. A lot of folks might, who've been doing business with DTN for a long time might remember we launched a commerce platform called the DTN Exchange. Gosh, it's probably been 15, 13 years ago now. And at the time, that platform revolutionized the concept of transactions. And it was largely used in, the, in that time for if you were fire sailing product or if you had maybe distressed product or a distressed product need, um, this would be a place where you might go out and look for special deals. And so that was really the beginning of the concept of digital commerce for DTN. And so for 13 years, we've, we've had a lot of opportunity to visit with clients and talk about what really are the problems of commerce and selling fuel and how to, how to facilitate transparent pricing, but also maximize margin dollars. And so, uh, yeah, about a year and a half ago, we made an acquisition of some really forward thinking, well-developed technology. Um, and so we will be bringing our energy digital commerce platform to market and that'll happen here. Um, we're, we're doing our marketing launch May 1. We've already got 10 or so clients on the platform now. Um, and so there are some benefits that we really think advance the concept of transactions and the ability to facilitate document movement. Um, it, you know, I mentioned, when I spoke a moment ago about the idea of getting paid faster, the time value of money, right? Um, and so this solution really incorporates all of those concepts. It does provide for very transparent pricing. And, you know, you, it also gives you the ability to negotiate a little bit. If that's what you'd like to do, there's going to be access to kind of a bid ask feature. Um, the interface is, is gorgeous. We should have thought to put a um, screenshot of it because it's just very clean and light and easy to use. Um, everything that you could possibly think of in terms of functionality is there. There's a price buildup tool. You can also integrate with um, other pricing systems. If you're using something that is third party, we can grab a file and take that and do what DTN does, which is, you know, move data pieces around. Um, and it also can, can be tied into any of your indices, including DTN fast racks, where if you want to have it kind of set it and forget it, um, a lot of, a lot of contract formulas are built that way. And so you could have it, you know, be tied to an index and then put some margin and whatever else um, formula components that you might want to do a rim share and so forth. 
um, and it will support any of that. All of that stuff comes straight in. You're not manually entering stuff daily. It's really, really streamlined and slick. So, you know, I think about the idea of facilitating communication between buyers and sellers. This is going to blow the doors off of that because, Steve, really what it does is that it evens opens up the market for you to people you might not be doing business with currently. It's really designed to be kind of that open marketplace. If you can imagine, you know, going to your, um, you know, your um, vegetable market uh, in your local community on a Saturday morning, um, you know, we kind of think about it in that way. And I think it um, it's really going to facilitate better communication and the ability for uh, folks to do business in a more streamlined and efficient way. It's really exciting. I, I think it's going to be a game changer, as I mentioned, and uh, I think the market's truly going to embrace it. Finally, uh, the last item in our key points is data. Uh, according to the survey, the top four were real-time data, market analysis, rack spot market data, and of course, the volume demand. While DTM provides each of the top four, how have we differentiated our offerings by adding analytical value? How have we turned data into information? One great example is our temperature correction index. We call it TCI. No one else can provide this level of volume to price calibration. Charles, how does this solution level the playing field for our customers? Well, thanks, Stephen. Uh, one of the things you mentioned earlier about data needs and DTN, just about everything that we provide, provide from an energy perspective is done in real time. And uh, we've been doing it that way for quite a long time, but. As you mentioned with TCI, uh, we're really excited about this product because as you well know, uh, material, meaning gasoline, distillate, or whatever the material is that you, you use in your business, uh, it has different characteristics uh, based on the temperature. It expands and contracts uh, throughout the day. And with that expansion and, and contraction, it does impact the value of the particular product. And we released this product about two years ago. And with TCI, it does give you the ability to understand those material changes at the terminal level every single day. Um, so if you're doing a contract with someone and you are interested in doing a contract over a, a, a year's period, the biggest problem that people have is how do you account for the future expansion and contraction of that product throughout the different seasons. Uh, and with this particular product, it takes the guesswork out. You don't have to guess. You don't have to try to anticipate. You can just take the factor or the, in, the index that we provide at each terminal every single day, insert it into your contract, and it will adjust it on a daily basis. Uh, to give you an example, the impact, uh, we looked at Dallas, which is the largest gasoline market in the country. There's 11 terminals in that particular location. If you take the difference between the coolest and the warmest terminal on a 7,500-gallon load, on average, there's about a 52-gallon difference between the two. Clearly an impact that most people, if you didn't have this information, wouldn't know. And because this information is readily available to you now, I'm sure there are other examples throughout the country where this would be a benefit to you. So that's an example of one of the data uh, solutions that we provide in real time for those people who have an interest. Thanks, Charles. Just another great example. I mean, there's there's so much innovation that DTN is driving today. It, it's difficult just to select even four, but uh, hopefully we gave you some good highlights. Um, before we take questions, I just want to leave you with a couple of final thoughts. I'm sure many of you know that oil always seeks the highest price. Some years the money's in the ground and others it's on the street. Wherever you might fall in the supply chain, you need digital intelligence to stay profitable. At DTN, we turn data into information. Think about this. Data is the new oil. Data is the new oil. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Tony to manage a couple of uh, last questions. Thank you so much. Yes, thanks, Steve. Uh, we're going to take a few questions now. Um, just a reminder, if you haven't yet, please type your questions into the question box in your control panel, and we'll address those now. Uh, we do have a question from Ryan or Ted. Uh, are you seeing similar trends in other industries, and how do the results of this study compare to metrics you're seeing in other industries? 
Oh, yeah. Wow, that's a great question. Um, well, when you think about the impact of digital broadly, it happened first in kind of information sectors like banking, for example. Um, but over the last decade in particular, really that more than that, um, but certainly in the last decade, an acceleration of um, information changing dynamics in asset intensive industries. So think about um, shipping, for example, right? The ability to project demand, the ability to share information ahead of uh, receipt if you like, um, allows for much more effective planning and, and, uh, and operations. And, you know, when you think about the kinds of data that would go into that in, in global shipping, for example, um, these long uh, term uh, weather forecasts allow a shipper to price a load across the Atlantic based on knowledge of what the route's going to be likely to be in that, in that part of the month or, or in that month of the year. And so there's a, huge amount of operational efficiency and also uh, pricing power that comes from having that data incorporated into your, you know, into the, into the shipping sector there. Uh, another example that's um, gained a huge amount of uh, visibility lately is in, um, think of it as, um, you know, discrete manufacturing. So maybe it's an airplane or it's the auto industry or uh, equipment makers. Their vendor managed inventory that's been around for a while, but the integration of the planning and operational systems among players has really accelerated with the use of the cloud uh, to share information with much better um, security protocols to exchange information and with the um, kind of provisioning, if you like, of consolidated information sources. So, for example, in, um, in aerospace, there's a big benefit that comes from having essentially a a facilitator, a marketplace, if you like, of, um, of, of parts. And uh, that marketplace really serves as a, as a, uh, almost as an extension to Airbus, for example, but they, um, it's called, uh, it's called supply on is the name of this marketplace, but they also provide this aggregated information repository that the manufacturers that are a little bit you know, downstream from Airbus, as well as Airbus itself can gain that visibility that spans the ecosystem. It spans um, the supply chain in its entirety. So definitely some examples there where efficiencies are, are critical and where insights are, are important on the ground and also over the long haul. So those are, those are some areas I'd point to, yeah. Great, thank you. We have another question for you, Chad. Um, were there any statistics or metrics that surprised you in the survey results? Uh, I don't know about surprise so much. I mean, there's a lot of great data in here. And so hopefully y'all will get a chance to read the, um, you know, read the study and, and kind of digest the findings. But um, this classic, you know, I want it, but I don't have it, that gap, that, that's quite common and, and not surprising. I think, honestly, the thing that popped for me the most were the statistics around the importance of real-time insights. You know, the double click on that, and you heard me voice it a bunch during the, um, you know, during the front part of this is that I need the information as an employee, as a planner, as a decision maker, and every employee is a decision maker at some level, right? To be able to act with confidence in that moment. And so having real-time data, having it in my pocket when I need it or available to me immediately, that's a tremendously powerful enabler. Um, and, and so that one, I was maybe less surprised, but I guess more happy, <laughs> maybe is the way to say it, uh, to see pop as a, as a priority, because I think that is a game changer for all of us. If you think about our personal lives, I mean, we want to know, you know, whether it's a flight delay or a storm coming or the score of a game. I mean, we just want to know. And that's just as true here as well. So that's the stat that really, uh, really popped for me, both as opportunity, uh, as challenge, and as I think um, value. So, yeah, that one. Thank you very much. Uh, it looks like we've covered all of our questions. Steve, Ted, is there anything else you wanted to cover before we wrap up? Just, I, I'd like to thank everybody for joining us today. Hopefully, uh, we've all have something to sort of take away and, and to keep in mind that when we talk about digital modernization, DTN can be truly be a force multiplier. Um, our customers count on us every single day in the downstream markets, and uh, we are innovating at a breakneck pace. 
And we really appreciate uh, the loyalty that our customers provide us and the opportunity to keep building great solutions for the market. All right. Well, thank you very much, panelists, and uh, thank you, Ted and, and Forrester, for helping us um, with this study. Uh, we found it to be extremely insightful, and we hope everyone else on the call thought so, too. Uh, we appreciate you being here, and as I said, we will um, redistribute the link to this webinar via email in the coming days. And in the meantime, if you do have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us via our website. Um, thanks again for joining us today, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye, everybody.